Welcome to the patio on a beautiful sunny sunny day here in southern Spain. It has been a busy time. It's been a little bit of a puzzle again. I don't have my winter legs going just yet, but I'm working on it. So the east side and the west side. These are two of my areas of main grow space when it comes to orchids that need a lot of light. During the summer, the east side has the rack because of the bright light that hits there and the warmth that is generated because of the terracotta floor. When it comes time to move the rack from the east to the west for the winter months, I normally wait for the light balance to equal itself out as the sun lowers in the sky, meaning ideally I want the same sun influence at 8 a.m. on the east side as I have on the west side. And if that happens at 9 a.m., that is even better because then I know that the temperature on the west side will somewhat match and equalize what I have going on in my grow space. The reason I'm telling you all of this is because I do not use supplemental lights and I do not use heat mats. So if there are any orchids that are in bud, I need the temperatures to be the similar or the same in the grow space as outside so that I can move the orchids outside on sunny or let's say bright days that even though they are overcast there's more light outdoors than there ever will be in the grow space. Now granted sometimes the grow space also has direct light coming in the angle of the sun being that low that it actually penetrates into that area. It's just not enough considering how fast the days go dark. Now, we have come to the stage that the west side is open. So I've moved my rack all the way back to the west side. This is also an ideal spot for me, even though the east side is still nice and bright because of all the white facade that we've got going on. But it's a great spot for me because it cuts a lot of time and steps to get all the orchids out onto the west side rack as opposed to me carrying them all around the building and putting them on the east side rack and then again in the afternoon I have the added benefit of once again that little west side corner heating up nicely because of the sun and the heat of the terracotta it gives me a little pocket of a climate that is warmer than what we would actually consider the temperature as such is it may be three degrees but that is important for me when it comes to only having a day that is 17 degrees outside that little pocket on the west side could be about 20 21 degrees celsius i'm going to take advantage of that and because I still have such bright sun and it is somewhat warm and toasty in that corner, yes, the curtain is still down. And I've had such terrible windstorms recently that it has been impossible to film outside, which resulted in my curtain getting very, very shredded. Never mind, I think for the winter months that's going to do fine and we can change that come spring. But you see, even though it is getting colder during the day, that sun is still bright, the atmosphere is clear and the orchids need protection. Most of the orchids that are in the blooming alley are also there mainly for the light. I don't have many blooms going on at the moment, at least not that I can put all into one frame. Having gotten all the orchids outside now, I still have some work to do. One area of which is I want to change the staging area, put that onto the west side for now as well, or where the hanging stand is right now. The lower the sun is in the sky, it also affects how my camera needs to be positioned so I don't get any flares, sun reflections into the lens, ruining the footage. And that is what we're going to do today. If you're so inclined to stick around, afterwards maybe the sun will be less powerful i will be able to remove that curtain let's have a look at my order which orchids come out to the west side at this point in time and they've also been outside at night because lo and behold surprise surprise i've had night temperatures up to 15 degrees celsius which is perfect i've saved myself 72 hours of a shuffle Soon we will drop down to 10 and 9 degrees at night and then, oh boy, I better get my winter legs up and running by then because despite the nights being cold, the days are still beautiful. So, <laughs> got my work cut out for me. Somehow the jigsaw puzzle isn't falling into place as quickly as I was hoping for. But first of all, let's get some work done. This is the staging part where I do filming quite a lot of the time during the summer months. But for the past week, it has served its purpose as my primping, preening and cleaning station. <laughs> Eventually, this stand will go into the corner where the hanging rack is. But for now, it's going to go on to the west side so that I can clean the bottom of the hedge there. This is not my job. I'm not going to do the whole gardening trim thing. 
The gardener has as yet to come and prepare the cypress hedge and everything around it for the winter, but I might as well do my job, get a head start, get things moved out of the way. Then the day when he comes, all I need to do is move all the rapiculous lelia and the stand over there. Stan the man, speaking of stands, Stan the man is on his stand over there as well. Lots of little things to do. Stop the jibber jabber, let's get on with it. While keeping an eye on my tolumnias, I've taken off a lead of one of them. This is history, but it's best that it goes and doesn't become a nice little hidey hole for more scale, which I'm really trying to keep under check. That should be good enough for now. I'm just checking to see if I can see any lecker beads up against the fence there, because that is dangerous. If I see any, they have to go. I think we're okay. Alrighty, that went better than expected. You see how pretty the sunshine is still on this side. The Anseli Africanus can still enjoy this corner of the patio and they can go down to 10 degrees Celsius so they can stay outside for a little bit longer than the other ones can. Point of reference, we're on the west side now, clearly the rack is over here. On the top I still have a tray to provide some shade, that'll come off eventually, but that is also where the Anseli Africanus will live. If the night temperatures drop below 10 degrees Celsius and I do have to bring them inside, I can quickly just put them out right on the top shelf there where they will get blasted with full sun when we do have sun. Now, usually Southern Spain is blessed with sunshine. That's why it's such a great destination for the winter. But the spring of 2022 brought a new realization and it wasn't a sunny time at all for a long, long time. And suddenly we were into summer. But anyway, I'm gonna take the tatty curtain down and show you who is outside. It looks pretty sparse, but that is because I have the orchids that need a bright light and I don't want to keep moving them. I have them up against the glass indoors, so they don't need to be moved out on the daily. This is mainly the shelf under the shop lights that gets to be moved out. And you can see how I faced them exactly the way they were positioned on the east side, except we're on the west side. The direction of the light is always maintained and respected as previously. So we got Crescentia green light, Renanthra citrina, Renantanda sunrise, here is my loose neary blue. The spike is already curling again. The one down here on the fan, this is the first time this fan will bloom, is producing a nice big spike. I don't see any deformity yet, but I'm expecting it any day now. And then of course my Ampoyathea pink dreamer over here, also always respecting the light because where it used to live in the blooming alley during the summer, these roots were backed up against the wall, taking into consideration that the wall also has a form of humidity. So everything is directed exactly the same. In the corner, I have the Brasiliense, I have the Lobata, and then the Luminosa. I'm gonna show you the Lobata though, cause I was gushing about it. I think it was on a live stream. Look at that growth. Isn't that awesome? It is under constant scrutiny now because I don't want any scale to attack this orchid. She's been in my collection since 2018, came as a tiny little thing, and I do see little white spots. I'll be right back. These little crawlers may well be dead, but I don't mind double upping here with my garlic alcohol. When I see it, I treat it because these, when they go inside, they're pretty close together. So yeah, anyway, Lobata is under a scrutiny because of the fact that I did treat for scale a couple of weeks ago. I have the Lundii and I have my Darwinara Blue Charm right there. My Vanda Vietnamica, which is not a happy Vanda at all because she is not in her right climate right there. I'm probably gonna lose her this winter. 
on the bottom, assorted dendrobiums and little cattleyas that are doing pretty, pretty well. And I have my Myrmecophila tibicinus here to the left. The Schomborgia will follow and will live on the top shelf together with the Ancelia africanas when the time comes to bring them in and out. They're right now in the blooming alley. So you see, this would be an ideal little corner for filming. However, the angle of the sun would also penetrate the camera quite quickly. And depending how long a project takes, I can't risk that. So ideally, my filming station will be, you can see how the sun is already affecting the lens but my filming station will be up over there where I constantly have shade. And that rack comes back over here swiftly once the hedge has been taken care of. And the reason I don't have that rack here right now so I can take advantage of the bright sunshine is because it is very warm in this little corner. And that would mean moving the orchids that are hanging and enjoying light out there elsewhere to enjoy shade, which is kind of silly. I've got beautiful bright light in that corner there and the orchids go out, they can stay there and then they come back in. Should I have them here right now, believe it or not, they would burn. And the orchids that are hanging back here right now are my Brassavolas and my two Neo Stylus Lucneries over there and Rainbow Forest and I'm contemplating Leopard Yawn, what to do with him. It's probably gonna be another orchid that's gonna go this winter. And of course my gorgeous, gorgeous Dendrobium Victoria Regina right here, opening up more blooms. And yes, we have the saturated bloom right here coming up, which is my favorite variety of all the Dendrobium Victoria Reginas that I have on this mount. Even as the blooms fade, they look gorgeous and here are the next buds super pleased with this orchid but that's pretty much a wrap i appreciate that you came and joined me for this video life is a bit of a puzzle right now jostling a few projects outside of the hedge which is a little annoying because i feel i need to keep an eye on my orchids at this time of year and of course get my winter legs going <laughs> but i've been blessed with some mild temperatures so i've taken advantage of them in the meantime if you've enjoyed this video please give it a like i would really appreciate that i'm sure the algorithm will eventually find my channel all the support is so much appreciated and youtube seems to like the interaction with the thumbs up i would very much appreciate that also remember that i've got live streams if you don't see a regular video posted in the notifications then check the live tab i'm sure that there will be videos there i stream thursdays through sundays sometimes even during the week spontaneously if something comes up but mainly thursday through sundays check them out there's always a good little giggle going on in those live streams jibber jabber and you get to hear the other voices and not just mine really appreciate you watching this video i sincerely hope that you are doing well in your part of the world have yourselves a fabulous fabulous day that one condition remains though that you stay safe take care bye